Hello, and welcome to day three of the Nona Church Holy Week devotional series. Today, we are going to look at Matthew chapter 24. Let's first orient ourselves in the story. Prior in chapter 16, Jesus reveals to his disciples that he must suffer, die, and on the third day be raised to life. He then brings along his friends, Peter, James, and John to a mountaintop to witness the transfiguration. They watch as Jesus, Moses, and Elijah talk together. And then they hear the very voice of God expressing his love of his son, Jesus. And then Jesus has a series of charged confrontations with the religious leaders of the day, teaching and confronting without any apparent concern for his own safety. His disciples must have been a mixture of excited, confused, and maybe even frightened. It seemed that Jesus was preparing to establish his kingdom and they all wanted a peace. It's at this point that we pick up in chapter 24. As Jesus leaves yet another difficult confrontation in the temple with the religious elite, his disciples pointed to its building. In Mark's words, they said, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. In Luke, it says that the disciples remarked how the temples were adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. In response, Jesus replies, do you see all these things? I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Now pause, put yourself there. Picture this in your mind. Jesus and the disciples are leaving the temple after yet another awkward and intense interaction where Jesus just called all the church leaders hypocrites and as unclean as whitewashed tombs. Breaking the tension, the disciples are looking around and Mark is like, wow, did you see how large these buildings are? Absolutely magnificent, top of the line technology. Then someone else chimes in, isn't the stonework just spectacular? I bet it's handcrafted, one of a kind. I can kind of imagine Jesus just keeps walking a bit ahead of them and the disciples all kind of exchange a worried glances at each other, trying to decide who is gonna figure out the situation. And then Jesus just drops a bomb. Not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. The disciples are concerned. They see, they still haven't gotten the picture yet. They are still expecting that Jesus is going to establish his kingdom here and now, that he's going to rule Israel toppling Rome. They are ready for war and the positions of power that would come with proximity to the Messiah. They are all jockeying for their positions. Man, James and John even enlisted their mom to help lock in their spot in the new kingdom. And so when Jesus says that the temple will be destroyed, they're thrown for a loop. So in true disciple form, they ask, teacher, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? You see, the disciples wanted to be ready. They wanted to be sure that they had the inside scoop to ensure their spot in this new kingdom. But Jesus warns them against that line of thought. Instead of telling them directly when and how he would return, he warns them of the many things that would not indicate his return, that were not to be confused with the end of the age. And then he states simply, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the son, but the father only. And then he continues, therefore you also must be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. There is no predictive sign other than Jesus himself returning in judgment, which at that time, it will be too late. The principal teaching of Jesus here is to stay alert, not necessarily to the way of the world, but to pay close attention to their lives, to our lives and our relationship with him. Like a servant who is to remain faithful in his master's absence, for he does not know when he will return. So we are to remain faithful. It does beg the question, if Jesus were to come today, would you be ready?